Hello, Fernando. Good afternoon. Hi, Emil. Hi, Sean. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Sorry about the confusion about the time. You're in the US, right, Sean? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I showed up at 11. No, but nobody else but Brett was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Brett. So hey, we should put out the time confusion in a moment. Yes. Uh, you know, that's our problem. Ah, I don't uh, know. The US, uh, <laughs> US does stupid shit with the time. Yeah, I don't know who does stupid shit, but things seem to be stupid anyway. I think during the autumn we we switch. More or less the same time, uh, both in Europe and, and the US. But in the spring, I think it differs for two. I think it's three weeks now this time, even not just two weeks. So, yeah, quite bad. <clears throat> so, Andrea will probably not join today. He had some private things to take care of. He might show up later, but might as well not. So, we'll see. Uh, I guess we shouldn't wait anymore. So please sign in on the uh, document. I will place the link unless you have it already. And I will share as well. Just a second. Let's see. But I should share my window. Yeah, that one. So I hope you see my browser window now. <clears throat> Settings up here. So there are no new attendees today. Uh, I have an old action item there on defining interoperability. I think that was from a, a meeting a long time ago that I maybe didn't attend. So I don't really remember what it was about. <clears throat> I need to ask Andrea about it sometime. If that's something we should do. Unless someone else of you remembers there about that. Uh, let's move on. So uh, just information topic next week, it's KubeCon. Uh, you in the US, I'm not sure. Are you traveling to Europe for that? I guess not. I just want to highlight that Andrea will have a talk there about uh, Tekton mainly, but he will According to the description, he will talk about seed events as part of it as well for a secure software supply chain. To the tech no, on. not heading out to Europe. Yeah. yeah. I think I heard, to. Yeah, I think I heard someone from the US at least in CDF coming. Was it Robert? Robert Reeves, I think, from the TSC will, will fly over here to attend. Uh, and due to the KubeCon, uh, I will not be available next Monday. Uh, I don't know about Andrea, uh, because I will be traveling at that time. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, Andrea should say if he will join or not. I guess if he doesn't join, maybe it's, so of course you can meet anyway. It's no problem. Uh, we should just sort out then what time to meet. <laughs> so we are all aligned on that. Uh, okay, then about the timing then, uh, daylight savings time. So we got to understand that today, when you joined there, Brett and Sean, uh, that the US already switched yesterday, but in Europe we switch on the last of March, so in three weeks. Uh, that means we have two more meetings now in between there. Uh, but the, the calendar, you have the link to the calendar and, uh, well, if you would look at the calendar and open the meeting from there, you would see that it hasn't, hadn't started yet. But I guess you have it as a personal uh, uh, meeting in your own calendars. We could add you to the uh, calendar item in the CDF calendar if you want. Uh, I have access to it and Andrea has as well. And then you will 
you will get the actual meeting into your own calendar. So if you would like that, you can reach out to me through PM on Slack or something, uh, and I can add your mail addresses. Uh, we don't need to state them here in the in the uh, minutes unless you want to. So let's not. But uh, reach out to me if you want to have the actual invite from the CDF public calendar, and I can give it to you. Yeah, no, I think that it showed up correctly on my uh, personal calendar. But yeah, you're right. In my work calendar, I have just like a, you know, one that I set up myself, and that one was yeah. messed. So, okay, okay, uh, good. So then, about those two coming meetings, then. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you say? Is it okay to keep it as it is now? And that means that it will be one hour later for you in the US, the two coming weeks? Uh, or would you prefer it to be moved to an earlier time, one hour earlier? I'm fine with this time. Yeah, I mean, this is lunchtime for me. It's fine. It's fine for you as well. Perfect. Because then it won't affect us in Europe, at least if we keep it as is. Uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah, what do you need to see for those two, two dates then? And you will see there in these links what 4 p.m. UTC means in your time zone. It is five o'clock in the afternoon in Linköping where I'm situated. So that's what the time is right now. Okay, let's not stay there for long, longer than let's go on. So the ticketing PR. Uh, we have got some progress on it. Yeah. I, approved, I approved it this morning, uh, and I think Andrea still has not approved it. Let's see if he has put some comments on it. I think he mentioned that he was quite okay with it now. I think so. Uh, yeah, there's only one, well, actually two unresolved conversations. Maybe those are the ones that I added. Let me just open them to see. <clears throat> yeah, so this was due to an extra space that was added here by mistake, I assume. Okay. So I just added then a, a well proposal that you just remove that space. That's nothing critical, I would say. So it's we can we can merge it without it. But then this other comment, it's outdated, and I don't know what code it referred to. I Do you remember that, Sean? I think it's been addressed. Uh, you might just need to take a look at it and resolve it, if so. Yeah, the problem is that it's quite hard to resolve this. I mean, if I click this, it will show up as <laughs> not available. So I don't really know in GitHub how to resolve such issues that you cannot find. Uh, I, I think it might be on the front page there. Yeah, I was, it might be on the conversations page. Uh, let's see. It's something about the field. It's, uh, uh, yeah, here it is. Yeah, this one it must be. Uh, and you commented, Andrea answered, and you commented again, and then you got thumbs up from me, but no comment from Andrea. But you changed it accordingly, right? Yeah. Yeah, we added all the fields back in there. Yeah. So let's let's resolve this then. I would say that should be fine now. I'll take that decision. Uh, that means it's only one small item left. Uh, would you like to resolve that, or should we? Yeah, I can push a quick update to fix that yeah. one. And then I assume that Andrea will will approve it once he is available. Cool. I think so. Uh, and Ben should, of course, approve it as well. We are three maintainers nowadays, so I think Ben should also bless bless the pull request. Yeah, cool. Uh, great. So let me set, put some notes on that here. 
Should be able to approve. Let's see, I don't know how to spell it out, but anyway, so I don't say that you need to approve it. Uh, okay, that's for that. Then about the links for requests. Oh, sorry. Ah, um, I had hoped for them to be here now. Um, both me and Andreas actually approved this one now. So. Um, since Ben is the maintainer who who created this pull request, I believe he should be able. To, he has, of course, he will approve it himself uh, implicitly. So um, I think this will be merged. I just have a final check with Andrea before before we merge it. But I haven't been any closer than this before on this one. That's pretty cool. Um, Stated like this, and we to be merged. Uh, and then I added about the custom events for request, which Andrea has prepared. <clears throat> Let's see if I, yeah, I requested some minor changes there as well earlier today. Uh, yeah, for example, it was capitalized the URI, but it should be. Stated this way instead, just in the documentation there. Some such small things were, were added. And then Andreas also said before that he will fix things that Ben has talked about there. So I expect Andrea to make another pull request on this one, another update, another commit. So there is one or two commits left until this can be merged, I assume. And That's about that. If we move on then to the webhook adapter, uh, Yolanda, do you want to say anything about the state of these? I think both these are ready for review, right? Yeah, the RFC is at the final uh, review and approval stage, I think. So I think you have approved it, but it should be yeah. merged. <clears throat> yeah, so this will become a first RFC, I think, in CD events community. I created a RFC folder under community. So if that goes fine here, so we can, I think we can, we can go to merge this. But... Yeah, I'm not sure actually what, um, what Ben and uh, Andrea are waiting <laughs> for here. Uh, I think we wrote a week ago in those minutes that more reviews would be needed on this. And that's of course then from Ben and Andrea. Uh, but from your perspective, they are all, all these the comments are solved, right? Yeah, it's all solved. Uh, it's updated, so yeah. And here's Andrea. Hi, Andrea, welcome. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, <laughs> so we can just rehash some of the information for you, Andrea, that we went through in the beginning of the meeting. Uh, I just mentioned about KubeCon next week, where you will have a talk mentioning CD events, I saw. It would be nice to see. I will be there. Uh, and then we talked about the, the timing for the meeting here now, since uh, North America has over, already gone over to daylight savings time. <clears throat> uh, but it's fine with both Brett and Sean to keep it as is in the calendar today. So it will be one hour later for them than the two coming coming dates, uh, since Europe will not go over to DST until end of March. Uh, so we keep it as it is. Uh, anyway, I will not be able to join next week. I don't know about you, Andrea. Will you be here next Monday, or will you be traveling or anything? Um. Yeah. No. I I won't be able to join next week there um yeah I'll, I'll be um in paris and yeah i got the, the day off on, on on monday and actually the, the following week 
I will be on PTO for oh. Easter holidays. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So I will be there either of those two meetings. Uh, let me add that as well then. Uh, let me do it this way. It's good, good to note so we remember that. Uh, I don't intend to be off on March 25th, so I think I can keep, keep the meeting then on that day. So let's see if more people take time off during that Easter week, but otherwise we will have the meeting. Uh, then we went over to the ticketing PR, which is now almost ready to be merged. There is just one minor uh, need to, to fix, and, and Sean said he will fix it now any, any minute. Uh, so once that's done, I guess you, Andrea, should make a final look at it, and if so, you can approve it. And we should ask Ben to, to look into it as well. Uh, and the linking PR, both you and I, Andrea, have approved it now. Should we just merge it, or, or what do you think? Should we wait for something? Uh, I think we should merge it or before we... anything else. Uh, yeah, so we don't get the process a rebase. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't know if there is any dependency between the links PR and the ticketing PR. Could be maybe some event verse type versioning. Uh, no, there shouldn't because the ticketing are all new events, right? So there shouldn't um, be any files, I think. Unless I'm... Yeah, still, still. Um... Ah, yeah, they're all new files. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Except this one, but this one is not affected by the links PR. If I yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah, I. I... I don't know if there is anything in this custom dictionary, but yeah, so if there is a conflict, it will be ah, yeah, yeah. very oh. minor. Yeah, yeah. So um, maybe a conflict yeah. in this file, yeah, could be. But apart from that, it's very minor. So, but let's merge the, the links PR first, and since that has been, been there for so long and it's approved now. Yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, and then we talked briefly about the custom events pull requests, uh, where we have some minor comments on approve on changes, both from from me and from Ben. I don't know if you have have updated on Ben's comments there. For example, this one was that updated or? Uh, no, sorry, I need to make um, to push a follow up. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to say, yeah, I acknowledge that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I need yeah. to make a new, yeah, sure, new version. Anything else to mention about this one? Then you think, or, or are we good to? Or do you have any questions on things you? Want to I, I've not, I've not seen your your comments yet. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, no, no problem. No problem. Is anything uh, you wanted to to discuss? No, I don't think this was just a typo. Uh, I believe. Then we have. Uh, yeah, some clarification, but that's not a major one. That's also a typo. And this is mostly a typo as well with the lowercase mm -hmm. URI there. Uh, and some further explanations, and this is a typo. Well, the, the only one, only thing maybe to talk about then would be this about linking. I mean, it might be easier to see if I open it in the other view there. Maybe see if we can align them on some some, some statement there. Uh, so if we go down to where is it now? Should, oh, it's of course in the readme. Sorry for the crossing back and forth. So this section here is about CD events and links uh, when it comes to custom events. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
you mentioned here that custom events can be linked like any other CD events. So links can exist between custom events as well as between custom events and the normal events or the standard events. Uh, I would like to add a, a note there uh, because from my experience or how, how I how I see that the use of these custom events, uh, well, at least one use of them could be that you have a quite a bounded context, limited context where you send these custom events, uh, which might not be the same as where the full spec of CD events are normally sent. So uh, it, it might be so that if, if you link from a custom event to a standardized uh, standard event, some consumers might be outside this bounded context or limited context. Uh, which means that they might not then have seen this custom event. Uh, that's at least how I envision some of the use cases for these custom events. That the scope of them could be a bit different when it comes to who would be able to consume them. Mm. Does that make yeah. sense to you, Andrea? I, I think it makes sense. I think it might apply in some setups for some like normal CD events as well. So you might have sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's it's worth mentioning it. Um, I mean, the the, the fact I, I guess what I meant here is that like think tactically or from a specification point of view, it is possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think it's it's fine to make a remark and say, you know, it's it's not guaranteed that I think it's in general it's not guaranteed that every consumer will receive all events. Um, for sure. So, so maybe it's actually better to put in the links, the links document somewhere. But we should move. We should merge that now. I don't know. If you don't think it makes more sense for the custom, we can just skip this comment. I think that's. I agree. That's that's okay as well. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah. No, but I. I mean, it, it is more likely for the customs probably. So it. Uh, I, I'm fine with with adding it here. So it's. But you can maybe rephrase it a bit because this was written quite quickly. So look it through. Okay. So it, I don't require it to be phrased exactly as I put it here. Okay. Uh, that's that. I think that's the only thing. Yeah, that was a typo. So there, there are no major things from my perspective on this custom events. So that should be fine. Anything good. else? Custom events there? No, and then we also started talking about the, the webhook adapter. And Jalando just said that this RFC is now ready to be merged, probably, uh, but it still lacks some approvals. So from you again, Andrea, uh, do you have any any concerns about merging the RFC here? Do you remember that, or would you like to read it? Um. I, I probably need to give it a very last look, but I mean, otherwise, I mean, if everyone else is okay with it, I, I don't have specific concerns. I, I mean, I remember the previous version. I don't think I've seen the very latest, but mm. it, it was that. already, it was already, yeah. That's right. So Jalanda, I think you did it somehow together with with the uh, with Ben, right? Or Ben has read this as well, so he should be fine with it. Or what do you think? Should we request his approval? Yeah, I think he's. Yeah, when I met last time, I think he's fine with the changes, uh, the design. So he has to like proceed on the implementation side also. Like I've created a PR for that even. Mm. Uh, I I think it looks good for him. So we will ask him for approval. Yeah, that's probably good to, to just ask him. Doesn't yeah. that make sense? Uh, and then about <laughs> the implementation there of the RPC client server, I haven't looked into this myself yet. Would yeah, like so I think Andrea, Andrea uh, thanks Andrea for taking time to have this initial review. I think he, uh, I've got a couple of comments from Andrea uh, that I've uh, solved. I mean, uh, comments are addressed. Uh, I think uh, two things I wanted to discuss here. So one is on the copyright. Uh, 
So because from EST that whatever we contribute uh, from Ericsson, so we use Nordix as a uh, source of point and we use the Nordix uh, copyright for all the uh, contributions here. Uh, yeah, so I think Andrea got a comment there like to use the CD events author here. So, but uh, I'm not sure I need, to, I need to check internally with the team again. So if that can be changed to this or it's fine to use Nordix here. I just wanted to check here as well. Okay. Yeah, how have you said about the copyrights before? I haven't been so involved in any real code more than right. this, the spec itself. Yeah, I mean, my, my, I guess my idea here is that, I mean, it, it, the file is initially, initially created by someone that belongs to Nordics um, Foundation. Um, but it may be, you know, edited by others at, at the end. I think the copyright owner should be the, the city events community. Um, I think that's common practice if you look at other projects, even I mean large projects like Kubernetes. I don't think you could submit their a PR with copyright other than the Kubernetes author. That, that said, I think that the most important part really is the, the Apache license. I don't think that copyright line is too relevant. I think the most important part, if you have the Apache 2 license, then it doesn't matter what kind of copyright you have there. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember we discussed this a bit in the Eiffel community as well. And the way we do it there is that we normally put the, the company who has prepared the actual first version of the file as the copyright owner, but then we add anyone else who, who then adds to that, that uh, file in some way. We'll also have well, we will not have it by company, we'll say, and others. And then for the complete list, you should look at the review history. Or the, sorry, the commit history. Um, so that's how it's dealt with there. But I'm not sure if that's really useful. I can You can show an example here. It looks in, in, in Eiffel, for example. So this is what it looks like for one of the files in, in, in the Eiffel community. So. It, it was Ericsson who created the first version of this file, and then since others have been involved, this is stated this way, and then for a full list of individual complete contributors. So we don't need to state all, all companies. And then also they're using the date in this way, so updating the, the, the uh, copyright to the current year always when doing changes. But I'm not sure if that's used much elsewhere, maybe not. If you have insights, Andrea, into how it's done in Kubernetes there, for example, then that might be a better, better example to look at. Um, I think this is something that we invented ourselves, so it might not be standardized in any way. What do the rest of you say there, Sean and Brett? That's pretty standard, um, the way you, Ericsson did it. Um, this one? Yeah. Uh, you you put the date and then you put the company and then <clears throat> the uh, the second line, I've seen that used to quite a bit. Okay. Um, the thing I worry about is um, there's no contributor agreement. So um, there's no way to enforce like handing over the copyrights. Um, so I worry about what Pigeon ran into where Pigeon's got all these different, has um, all these different contributors and they can't do anything like change the license of the of the software because they can't contact all the people that have copyrights in it. Wow. Um, and because, you know, some of them are gone, dead, passed away, don't work on this anymore. Um, and so Pigeon is stuck with their, in their current state. Um, so that's oh. one thing I, that's the only thing I would worry about, um, you know, 
you like, like, I mean, all... is there a proposal how to handle that somewhere in pigeon or how it should have been done uh i don't know i haven't um i i, I listened to a podcast where he talked the maintainer of pigeon talked about it okay um so Andrea. yeah I, I think for, I mean, CLA can be, I mean, we, we have it and like in, in Tacton, there is a easy CLA um, service offered by, by the Linux Foundation. So we could use that, but it, it can be kind of a higher barrier for contribution. Uh, I think on yes, some no, other I... repos in CD events, I we, we enable the TCO. Um, and that's maybe should I think that should be enough to um to avoid the situation if all the commits are signed off by contributors. Yeah. Um but that's that's a good point. So that's something we, we, we need to make sure we 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 have um enabled. Is it in where is that stated, Andrea? I don't remember where DC always puts as a requirement. Well, um, I think Jump GitHub uh, re allows you to require for um, yeah for a branch or for uh, commits to be signed. Right. Uh, but there is a, a GitHub app that you can install to require ah. the actual sign off line at the end of a, a commit message where it says signed off by right, blah, blah. right and that implies kind of that the code in that commit has been produced by the person who signed it off mm -hmm. um so um but, but it would be interesting to hear from from the pigeon guys there if they could see it could say how it should have been done to not end up in that situation because who knows we might as well um, right <clears throat> that's something to be well, yeah we are here okay i also linked a, a blog post by the linux foundation it's a few years old from 2020 uh, but yeah it gives some comments about um, copyright notices in open source projects and why to include them or not include them. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in, in general, I would say I, I don't think we should block PRs at this point on, on that. I mean, as, as long as we have the, the Apache license, but yeah, it would be good to to clarify and have a general uh, rule that we want to follow. Um, yeah. So where did we have the example here? Was it in this one somewhere? Yeah, it's here. Yeah. So if I do this, maybe. It doesn't say date or year even. But uh, so yes, Andrea, you said you had a link there. Maybe I should open it up so I see this as well. To this one, yeah. Um, mm. Community best practice. But there is no like quick example on, on what it should look like. And whether the year should be part of it or not. Uh, 
well, in, in the examples, just a few lines below, it doesn't necessarily include a year. No. Uh, but it, it can be. Um, well, that's meant. I think it's um, it's really more like what what people want to have there. I don't think there is any legal requirement to to, to have that. But if people prefer to have them, it's one extra thing to maintain, possibly. So if one puts an interval, for instance, every time, then the, the year is changed, then the interval has to be updated. Things like that. That that's information that normally can be extracted from from Git. Mm. But you might lose Git history if the code is taken then and moved to somewhere else. Right. So yeah. Does the Apache license allow you to move the code somewhere else and without um, referring the, the original or maybe it does? I think it does. Yeah. I think Rest attribution up. attribution is always recommended. I don't think. Attribution is enforced strictly with Apache mm -hmm. 2. Yeah, maybe we cannot really come to a conclusion here, but I think we should at least have a, we should look through and decide on, on which, which way to go. I'm not sure if we need to enforce it in all the CD events community repositories. It might be good to do, but I don't know if we really need to. It doesn't sound like we need one way to do it all over. Um, but I, I don't Sorry. think that this should, should block the pull request, maybe, for now. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I agree. I mean, I think it's it's probably good to have a recommendation, at least community wide CD events. If specific projects within CD events want to have a different approach, um, I don't know if for Nordics, um, it's a requirement to have that, and they would not be able to contribute. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, I I prefer to have that in rather than you know sending contributing contributions away so sure, um, sure. Um, i guess we have some repositories where we could maybe enforce such a recommendation for example the spec repository um, where we want some some more control maybe but uh, but is it a yeah. good way then to write an issue about this and discuss this through an issue and uh, then possibly updates our source code with correct commit uh, copyright statements or such if we see the need for it. Okay, sounds good, yeah. Okay, good. So except for that then on the, the RPC client server pull request, is there anything else to talk about there, Delander? Oh yeah, so one last thing I think, uh, one other comment, I need some clarification maybe uh, that. Uh, if you go very bottom of the discussions or comments. Yeah, so I think, yeah, about this one, like I kept, uh, the configuration as like for each different sources will have it will be like get translator gitlab get gitlab github translator so different things will have these configuration like name a plugin url where the uh, implementation can be downloaded as a plugin implementation so and this is the message broker that I've, i'm keeping it as separate so but is this like uh andreas comment is like we need to keep only one uh, event spoker, I just added like to have that flexibility, like 
people can have different can use like this webhook adapter for different sources and they can have a different events broker to send the events if that use case uh, fits in here or you want a single event broker that we can use it here um so could could i have the same source i mean could i have the same plugin there going to different message brokers you think With, um, or is it sorry. meant to be one plugin to one destination so what, what i don't really understand in my mind is why a certain source is associated one-to-one -one, or if it is associated one-to-one -to, -one to a certain destination so i can see i mean i'm receiving <laughs> messages from gary github and gitlab but mm -hmm. i don't see why all the messages from github should go to one specific destination all from gary to another destination i mean i can imagine i could i might want to split messages or I might want to send them all to multiple destinations, or I, might, I mean, there are multiple use cases we can build. I, I'm not saying that this use case is not possible. I was just wondering by this specific association, what was the, the meaning behind it? So if it was a specific use case where you see this is a common setup or... Um, you, yeah, I see like if, if we have uh, a sources, like a different sources can be there. Like if they want to maintain different events broker, multiple events broker for different sources. So in that case, uh, so it can be used, but if, if they, if at all, like they wanted to use same events broker to send, so they can simply configure, I mean, same events broker for multiple sources. It, it just give that flexibility with the configuration that I've added here, but uh, uh, yeah, we can we can change it. Like if any use case. Yeah, no, yeah, sure. No, I mean, it, it gives some flexibility, but not really the full flexibility. And I was, it, it seemed a bit peculiar to me that adding an extra message broker required adding an extra plugin. I don't see the one-to-one -one association between plugins sources and destinations really but it's it's fine um it, we, we can keep it as it is and we can um we can evolve yeah. it over time as needs uh, but, but, but it be better than the other thing to to name the broker as well and then have a relationship list between the the uh, the plugin and the brokers somewhere else in in the in the config is that what you're looking for more? Yeah, I mean, for, for me, there are two different aspects. So one thing is that the plugin, so the events, the plugins that I have, in, that I'm installing, and those are the events that I'm getting. And then I'm sending the results somewhere. And I think the basic use case is to have one. Uh, and the other use case, it can, it's, it's to have multiple ones where all events are sent. It could be another use case or another use case could be this, <clears throat> to say, well, I want to send some, some, some of the events somewhere and some of other events somewhere else. And then if you wanted to do something like that, but that's already feels like very advanced to me for this. Um, if you wanted to do something like that, I, I would imagine doing it maybe based on the type of the message that was produced. Or, or some other information rather than the source. Yeah. Uh, they say like all the ticket events, I want to send them somewhere and all the, you know, I mean, the source could be also one of the fields that we use for filtering, but this is hard coding yeah. the source as the only way we can filter. And I, I didn't see the, the, the reason or the need for that. But again, it's, as Jaranda said, if, if you want to have uh, the same message broker, one message broker for all plugins, we can still configure the URL multiple times, one per plugin. Yeah. It just seemed a bit unnatural for me uh, that if I'm setting up the system, I want to add one plugin, I need to repeat the, the URL of the message broker, but it's not a big deal. Uh, 
Uh, I think that could, of course, be elaborated and changed later on. I'm thinking if, uh, where is it? Is it this one, right? Uh, if there should be a version of the uh, translator plugins schema, so to say, here. So if we would eventually refactor this configuration file later on, uh, should we then have it versionized in some way? So or maybe that's not needed. This is only locally, right, for the plugin itself. So if we update the code, we will update this file at the same time, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, so the code change is needed. Uh, like, yeah, so the code will be mod uh, will need to be modified. So if this changes, uh, the way we load uh, the plugin changes within the code. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But maybe it's okay to keep it as it is now to get this in and get going with it and, and try using it or whenever it's done. Um, and then, of course, changes can come later to make it more flexible and then whatever needed in the future. Yeah, so so if, if we want to keep it more generic the way uh, you're saying, Andrea, so we should have basically filters, is it like, so that should be running uh, within the events broker based on the type, but that can be configured uh, in the events broker itself as a filters. Uh, so we don't need any uh, configuration here. Uh, is what you're saying in the comment comments too, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I I don't think we this we should start implementing really like broker functionalities in this. We should let the broker do the the brokering and keep it as simple as possible on on the adapter side. Um. But yeah, I, I didn't want to make a big, big deal of this. I mean, it's fine. We can start with this and we can still change it if required. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions you had, Rolanda, on this or things to note? Yeah, uh, that's all I have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so the proper statement was there. We talked about the adapter, and that's the end of the agenda. Is there anything else anyone wants to to bring up to our attention? Um, I guess one question uh, maybe was: what Do we want to do about uh, release? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and. I mean, we're going to merge the, the link PR now, but there are a few other things that are probably very close to mm -hmm. merging, like the ticketing and the custom events. Um, so we, we can either make a release 04 with the ticketing and things, uh, sorry, with the links and things that were released before. And then once we merge other things, just make a new release. Um, or we could just bundle everything into the next release. Uh, you know, and that will probably mean that the, the next 0 05 would be farther on in the future. Uh, but it also means fewer versions of events and fewer churn, less churn, probably. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure really yet. But I, I think that we really need to get this linking proposal out the door now and, and into a release as soon as possible. Uh, so people can start playing around with it and, and see how it how it works out. So we can eventually make updates to it in the coming release as well. Uh, yeah. So I think it makes sense to actually release the protocol as, as soon as we have that in and maybe then the other low hanging fruit which are coming in i think the ticketing event is almost there right and the custom events as well so yeah those shouldn't be very hard to get in at least 
Uh, and I'm not exactly sure about the other pull requests here, how far away they are, but we can maybe look into those as well. But I, I don't think that we need to wait for at least, not all of these, of course, all of these issues mm -hmm. to come in. That doesn't really make yeah. sense, at least. So. OK. Um, the, I mean, the other thing for, for the links, specifically at least, because it's such a big new functionality, I think it will most likely, or it will surely require some extra work on the SDKs to implement. Mm -hmm. uh, at least on the Go SDK, I'm pretty sure, because we have like sub schemas and we have a lot of new functionality. And also there is the whole links API bit that needs to be designed, how it should look like in the SDKs and so forth. Uh, but that's that doesn't need to be part of release 03. I think that can be you know, something we, we add and maybe we, we can do we could do an initial zero sorry a release zero four. Yeah. We could even do an initial release zero four that just includes the what's in the, the spec and it doesn't it's not able to talk to the links API yet. And we could do that as a follow-up just to keep the SDK moving yeah, sure. faster. For sure, of course. And uh, now in the links pull request, there are two ways of creating these links, both the embedded and the, uh, uh, what is it called? Out isolated or what's, uh, whatever, outside. <laughs> uh, so two ways to create the links. And okay, maybe, maybe all SDKs don't need to support both of them, I don't know. Or if the if the links API should be its own SDK, I don't really, for the external the, the linking there external linking support. So, but I think as soon as we merge this pull request, such things will start to be popping up, and we will start discussing them because today it's a bit hard to discuss them since we don't have the code in on the main branch. Uh, but yes, I think we we could we could release the SDKs in a uh, iterative way uh, to not support all features of 0 to 4 at the same time, maybe. That would be fine. Yeah. Also, one, one last thing maybe worth mentioning about the SDK. So uh, there's been quite some work on the um, done on the uh, Rust SDK. Uh, and the latest thing that uh, Containers have been working on has been supporting multiple releases, and, and the way we generate code from specification in, in the various SDKs is typically using Git sub modules that point to the spec, and then the so the JSON schemas are pulled in that way, and then code is generated. And so what they propose to and in the uh, Rust SDK is to have multiple sub modules each some module pointing to a different version of the spec and then generating different versions of the objects or classes that are associated to the different events with a version tag in the, in the name of the files. So that we, then the SDK can, based on certain inputs, produce <clears throat> and consume events that correspond to a different spec version. Um, I think that's a nice idea and it's probably maybe something we, we, we could do in the other SDKs as well. And I think another advantage or something that we could try to do is to, to have the, the main branch in there as well. That would allow us to kind of preview on the SDK side what is happening on the spec and you know test that the generation is still working and, and those kind of things. With the only caveat that we should not release when when we make a build of the SDK. We should not include the functionality to produce or consume events from this the main version of the spec, because those events are not meant to be produced and consumed until they are released. Hmm. I'm not sure if I captured it correct in the sentence, there, Andrea. Uh, you can correct me if I if I misinterpreted you. Uh, but so if I use some strange terminology. <clears throat>
Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Good. So let's start preparing for the Zeros 4 once we have merged the low hanging pull requests that are there in the list now. <laughs> Great. Uh, good stuff. And maybe then the Zeros 4 could hopefully be announced as well on, on the CDCon in April. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. So Roxanne prepared a template for a blog post about mm -hmm. 0 0.4. Yeah. And I think she invited uh, Ben, myself, uh, and you, Emil, to contribute. Yeah. But if folks have contributed things to that 0 0.4 version, they would like to, to write something about, please let us know so we can include it in there as well. Um, and we, I think it's 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 good. We we could do it for zero five again. So depending on whether we have the tickets on zero four or in zero five, um, we can include in the blog post. Uh, maybe it would be from from a certain point of view, it might be nice if we have a zero version, but zero point five. It won't be so far in the future from zero point four, and it would include tickets. And then tickets would be kind of the highlight of that release. And so we could have a blog post dedicated to that uh, rather than be being mixed in with links. Uh, I guess it would take some uh, attention away from in, in, in the blog post. But again, that's. You mean delaying the ticketing PR so that it can be in its own release? Is that what you're saying? Or... Yeah, maybe like things like we could we could say custom events and and tickets we we put them in zero five so they their own their own release and we can make a blog post about them, or we can keep them all together and put them in a, make a larger blog post. That's also fine. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Do it mean that it would be quicker maybe to create a blog post instead of four if we just think of things? Is that what you're aiming at or? Because otherwise, I think we will have less admin if we just create one blog post for all these very soon to be merged peers. Uh, this is that how I feel? But yeah, maybe. yeah, no, I didn't mean it in terms of less work. I meant like having, if we have more things in one blog post or a separate blog post, yeah. you can kind of have like a main item okay. to yeah. highlight. Uh, but yeah, th that's fine. Yeah, uh, we don't have to to make it more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I think we. I mean, we're still kind of in early days still, and and I think people would be interested to see whatever has come in in a in a new series of events release, regardless of if it's just one main topic or two or three main topics in one release. Shouldn't matter too much, I hope. And I think we will get those features in earlier if we combine them in 04 and in the same blog post. Otherwise, okay. we just wait indefinitely. Yeah. So I propose that we have one in 04. Um, OK. OK, Fine. sounds good. I see. Um, Good talking to you. And next week, then, we will not have a meeting next week. But the week after, I will drive the meeting. OK. Talk to you then. Bye. See you guys. Bye. 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 Thanks.